day, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here uh, to talk to you about Cognos Workspace Advanced. My name is Rich Chester. I'm the Director of Consulting at LPA Systems. And today's agenda goes as follows. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about just what is this Cognos Workspace Advanced tool. Uh, you'll hear me call it CWA throughout this uh, presentation. And how does Cognos Workspace Advanced relate to Cognos Workspace? What is the relationship? They seem named similarly enough that there almost has to be a relationship, right? We'll talk about the user interface and what it looks like, and then we're going to spend the bulk of our time together um, with me using Cognos Workspace Advanced to write some reports so you get a notion of its functionality uh, versus the other tools like uh, Query Studio or full-on Report Studio. Then we're going to talk about something that was introduced in the 10.2.2 release called Custom User Interfaces and Profiles. And then I'll do a quick demonstration of that. And then hopefully there'll be some time for some questions and uh, perhaps some answers at the end. Uh, if you have questions throughout this presentation, please go ahead and enter them in the chat box on the uh, WebEx. Uh, all the questions you submit will eventually get answered. Uh, if I don't have time to answer them on air, uh, we will uh, batch them up and I will answer them in writing and you'll receive an email with the answers to your questions after the webinar. So please do go ahead and submit them and I apologize in advance for any we don't get to live, uh, but you will get an answer. So let's talk about what this Cognos Workspace Advanced tool is and is all about. Um, it's a web-based tool just like all of the other tools. You access this through the Cognos connection. It allows you to author reports and analyze data. It can work with the relational data. It can work with uh, cubes, you know, so power cubes, dynamic cubes, uh, analysis services cubes, S-space cubes, any OLAP technology that Cognos can read, any relational technology that Cognos can read. You can write reports using that data in Cognos Workspace Advanced. Um, it presents information to you and lists cross tabs and charts. Uh, it's invoked as a studio. So just like you would invoke a query studio or an analysis studio or a report studio to write a brand spanking new report, you can now um, invoke Cognos Workspace Advanced. And to that extent, it is just another studio for you to author reports with. Um, but you can also invoke this from within Cognos Workspace to do advanced editing on a widget. So let's talk quickly about that notion. So Cognos Workspace is the tool that allows you to reuse uh, portions of reports, a cross tab from this report, a chart from that report, a map from this third report, and assemble them onto a workspace, essentially creating a dashboard. And each component you drag on to your workspace, you know, the trust tab, the chart, and so on, um, we'll call a widget. And so let's suppose you dragged on a widget that looks like the area chart here in my picture. Um, and you wanted to uh, take and edit this. Perhaps you wanted to change uh, the time frame and add a filter. Perhaps you wanted to change the chart type. Perhaps you wanted to change the, from product lines to regions. Whatever change you wanted to make, uh, there are certain ones you can do within Workspace. For example, you can change the chart type. So it could go from an area to a column chart if you wanted without leaving the world of Cognos Workspace. But to change from product line to region um, would not be something supported directly by Cognos Workspace. It would actually require that you edit that widget in Cognos Workspace Advanced. So there's a button right on the widget toolbar. Um, it looks like a little gear. And also on the widget action menu, there is a do more menu item. Both of those do the same thing. What they'll do is they'll open this widget in Cognos Workspace Advanced and give you the full power of Cognos Workspace Advanced to edit this widget. Um, you can change virtually anything, right, because it's a full-on authoring studio. Once you finish, you click the Done button. That saves it back into the workspace that the widget was in when you said do more. So it doesn't allow you to save that widget as a new report after you've made all these mods. Once you invoke Cognos Workspace Advanced on a widget, the only thing you can do after you finish editing is save that widget back to the workspace that you started in. Uh, but this gives you, for those people, you give the access to the tool. Um, Cognos Workspace has multiple uh, levels of access, only um, one of which includes this do more functionality. So if you give people this do more functionality, 
they can go ahead and do um, you know, very sophisticated edits on widgets that they have pulled in from other reports and um, then save them back to that workspace. So if that's the integration between Cognos Workspace and Cognos Workspace Advanced. Um, it's not a more advanced version of Workspace. They actually have two separate purposes. Workspace itself is for creating dashboard type things by reusing report parts um, and in 10.2.2, there's even a way to create a new widget directly inside of Workspace um, from a package. But its intention is creating dashboards and laying out dashboards in essentially a free format way, reusing pieces of reports uh, when the port reports contain components you'd like on your dashboard. Cognos Workspace Advanced can be a standalone authoring tool where you could start a brand new report from scratch just like you could with uh, Query Studio uh, or Report Studio. But when you invoke it through the Do More in Cognos Workspace, you get full access to the power of the Workspace Advanced Studio environment, uh, but you, you end by saving that updated widget back into the workspace it started in. So that's the integration between the two tools. Now, looking at Cognos Workspace Advanced or CWA as a studio, how does it compare to Query Studio and Report Studio? And as the picture implies, um, it, it fits kind of in the middle uh, between the Query Studio that a lot of us have used since Cognos ReportNet days and Report Studio that a lot of us have used since Re uh, Cognos ReportNet days. And those of us who have been around um, the tool for a while realize that um, Query Studio it, uh, was an end user, uh, business user type tool. Uh, didn't take a long time to learn, drag it, drop it, see my data, um, but not particularly sophisticated in terms of power. Um, simple ad hoc reports, it worked pretty well for. Uh, complex layouts, uh, reports that had multiple objects on them, two lists, a chart, and a cross tab. Not really doable in Query Studio, but pretty simple to learn, pretty um, straightforward to know you're getting good results because you're seeing data as you go. On the other end of the spectrum is Report Studio. Report Studio is the professional authoring tool. It is the um, tool that has the most functionality in terms of the kinds of reports you can write. It allows you to create reports with multiple objects on the page. It allows you to manipulate um, queries. So I can create two queries in the report, join them, and then write a cross tab based on the result of that join. Uh, very sophisticated layouts, very sophisticated functionality and power, very sophisticated in terms of pixel perfect layout. Um, takes uh, a number of days to learn, um, and some of us would say a lifetime to master. Uh, it is uh, a very powerful tool. And when you compare Query Studio and Report Studio, um, there's a vast difference in terms of the power between those two tools. And for a long time, there was nothing that bridged that gap. So end users would be using Query Studio. They would be um, going in and they would hit a wall. They would find that there's functionality they needed that Query Studio didn't support. But to go to Report Studio was a very big leap um, for many users. Not to say that people didn't, um, but it took a bit of doing uh, to get there. Enter Cognos Workspace Advanced. Cognos Workspace Advanced really does everything that Query Studio can do and a bunch of stuff, but not everything, that Report Studio can do. So, whereas Query Studio was generally focused around one query, one ad hoc thing that you expressed as a list, a cross tab, or a chart, um, Workspace Advanced, like Report Studio, you can have multiple objects, and each one would have their own query. So, I could do a chart about a region analysis, I could do a cross tab on a product analysis, and I could do a um, a list, a group list, uh, doing an employee analysis, all in the same report. Something I cannot do in Query Studio, but I can do in Report Studio. Um, calculations uh, in Cognos Workspace Advanced, again, more sophisticated than Query Studio, but not the full library of functions that are found in Report Studio. Um, I can go on and on, and the slide does lay out a couple of other things, but suffice it to say, it fits between the two. It gives you all the power of the Query Studio tool and then some, but it is not as sophisticated um, as Report Studio, so it bridges between the two, which is a great stepping stone for people who are going from Query Studio to Report Studio. Now the other thing it has um, that is quite um, powerful from this bridging perspective, this getting you from Query Studio 
uh, into Cognos Workspace Advanced more power is that it's still a drag and drop interface where you see data as you author. Now, all of us know that once in a while, authoring while you see data is not optimal because the data takes some time to return and you don't want to wait between drags and drops for your data to return. Well, just like in Query Studio where you can turn that function off, you can also do it in Cognos Workspace Advanced. However, it is unlike Report Studio, um, a, a tool that has this mode in it where you can see data as you author. Now, what types of reports can I author with Cognos Workspace Advanced? Well, I can author lists, cross tabs, and charts. Um, lists, generally speaking, are the detailed uh, types of reports, the operational types of reports. Lots of times these are grouped. All of that functionality is supported in CWA. Um, cross tabs, some people like to call them pivots. Uh, these are um, uh, summary data uh, with rows and columns that express intersections, and in the intersections I summarize numbers. And charts are essentially pictures of cross tabs. Um, instead of rows and columns, they typically have drop zones called series and category, but it's a summary object where data is expressed in a, a visual way as opposed to in a tabular way like a cross tab. All three of those can be authored, and importantly, they can be mixed and matched on the report. So they don't, it's not limited to one cross tab or one list or one chart per report in CWA. <clears throat> this is the Cognos Workspace Advanced User Interface. Um, along the top, there is a toolbar with a bunch of buttons. Um, along the uh, left-hand side, that big pane, that's called the work area. On the right-hand side um, is the content and properties panes. And um, a lot of you who are used to Query Studio and Report Studio are saying to yourself, gee, that's funny. That's sitting on the right-hand side of the screen, and I'm used to that thing sitting on the left-hand side of the screen. Well, it turns out that we can change it to the left side, and I find that I do that often um, because I'm so used to authoring uh, by dragging from the left and dropping on the right. I'll show you how you do that when we get into the demo. Um, but that doesn't change the names of the panes, it just changes their location, right? So we've got this work area where we drag things into. We have the content pane, which has a source tab and a toolbox tab. And those are my insertable objects onto my page. I have a properties pane that is sensitive to what I click on. So this is new from a Query Studio to CWA um, jump. In Query Studio, there are, are no property panes, right? So in CWA, that's a new thing to learn, how to leverage that. Um, what you'll find, though, is that most things that are in the property pane are also a button um, or also available on a right click. And therefore, it's not actually critical that you learn to get comfortable with the properties pane, um, but it's there. Uh, and I'll show it to you, and I'll also show you what I mean by there's buttons and there's right clicks uh, that do the same thing. On the lower left, because this is a see data as I go tool, um, when I have multiple pages of output being displayed, I need page up and page down links, and those are on the lower left there. They're gray right now because it's not a multi-page report that I screenshot when I built this slide. Okay? Uh, the buttons and the property sheet are sensitive to what you click in the work area. What I click on in the work area will activate some buttons and properties, and other buttons will remain gray because they're not applicable to what I clicked on in the work area. So that's fundamentally the user interface. And one of the very first things I do is I do the setting to move this over here to the left where I'm used to seeing it. Now, I talked before about how you see data as you go. Um, that is what's known in Cognos Workspace Advanced as preview mode. So there's two modes in uh, Workspace Advanced. In CWA, the default mode is preview mode. That is the drag my column, drop it in a list, see data for that column mode. It's live data as I go. Um, the other mode is called design mode. And you get there off of uh, this menu up here, view, and you can switch between them. The design mode is the author with no data. Uh, preview mode is author with data. Okay? Um, so you can turn those on and off as appropriate. Turns out, though, that when you edit a widget from within workspace with the do more functionality, that design mode option is not available to you. Um, that's only available to you when you've invoked Workspace Advanced as a studio, uh, write report from scratch or edit a report mode.
Okay, that properties pane, uh, for those of you who are Report Studio people, that property pane works exactly the same as it does in Report Studio, but it has fewer properties. You see it's formatted differently, um, you know, some might say in a more friendly way. Um, it is, uh, though it has an ancestor button on the top, it has a property sheet there, but it doesn't have every property. For example, a lot of us are used to resizing objects on our page in Report Studio by going and editing the size and overflow property. Turns out that property is not in the property sheet. And there are a bunch of others, conditional formatting properties and so on. Remember, this is a tool that is simpler than Report Studio. It doesn't replace Report Studio. It gives me a way to have my end users quickly come up to speed on an authoring tool. If they've never used Query Studio, there's really no reason for them to learn it. They can jump right into Workspace Advanced and be productive right away. For those who've been using Query Studio but have hit a, a brick wall, right, they use Cognos Workspace Advanced and they get the next step up in functionality. Um, if you are a Report Studio user and you're using CWA, you'll feel very comfortable with the property sheet and the ancestor button. But like I said before, a lot of folks um, who are uh, not used to Report Studio find property sheets somewhat intimidating and uh, in the demo I'll show you that they're, they're really very seldom needed uh, to do what you need to do in the tool. The insertable objects, um, are, of course, come from the package you choose when you launch the report to edit, uh, 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 to create a new report. You have to pick a package. That's the source tab. Uh, the toolbox tab contains a bunch of tools, again, like Report Studio, um, but fewer tools than are in Report Studio. So this is a screenshot of the toolbox um, from Cognos version 10.2.2. So that'll give you... Um, the ability to add lists, cross tabs, and charts. So this is how you get the second and third and fourth one on your report. Visualizations, um, the uh, uh, chart library that you can download um, uh, is uh, also uh, supported in the Workspace Advanced World. So CWA, um, if you've loaded library, a library of visualizations up, you can add those visualizations to your CWA report uh, along with your lists, cross tabs, and charts. Also notice there's some calculation stuff. Um, text items and blocks, tables to lay out your report, and so on. So, enough said. Let's go ahead and take a look at Cognos Workspace Advanced in action. So I've logged into my Cognos environment. I'm going to go to my home. Uh, I have the uh, samples loaded on my little server here. And I'm just going to go ahead and launch Cognos Workspace Advanced. And just like I launch any authoring studio, the first thing I have to do is pick a package against which to author. So I'm going to pick my ghost sales query package. And uh, let me always allow some pop-ups here. And when the screen clears, what you'll note is that the uh, insertable object pane is on the wrong side. It's on the right-hand side. Um, and I want to move it to the left-hand side. And that turns out to be one of the few things that when you change it in Cognos Workspace Advanced, you actually have to exit CWA and come back in for it to take effect. Um, so uh, this is the first time I've started this tool up on this PC. So it's just taking a couple of seconds here. And I'll do Create New uh, just so I can get into the tool. And I'll uh, do Cross Tab. And we'll cover what I'm doing in a second. You see how it's on the wrong side? So I'm going to just go to Tools, Options, and then I'm going to uh, uncheck Position Pane on the right. You see how it says Requires Restart? When I click OK, nothing will change. I actually need to exit and relaunch. But now when I relaunch, it will show up on the left-hand side once the um, screen clears and the tool loads. So I've launched the tool. I've picked the package. It's now going to present me with the welcome screen. And the welcome screen is going to ask me if I'd like to create a new report, open an existing report, or new in 10.2.2, uh, create a report using a template. Uh, so you can create templates in, uh, uh, with these authoring tools and save them. And a template is essentially a starting point. Perhaps you have a very common look and feel that you would like on all of your reports. And so you've taken some time to set that up. Maybe you have branded um, your report page. You put uh, a certain set of colors uh, in the class library. You've taken and put certain header and footer setups that you want to be common across all your reports. Um, maybe you've even done uh, some layout that is going to be common to all of your reports. You can save that as a template, and then I can create a new report using that template, which will get a copy of all of those good settings that you've done 
um, rather than starting with the default templates that come out of the box with Cognos. And that's what Create New does. Create New says, let's work with the default templates. The default templates for Cognos Workspace Advanced are the ones on the screen. List, cross tab, and chart. Financial is a special kind of cross tab, so for all intents and purposes, it's list, cross tabs, and charts. I'm going to go ahead and start with a list. And it's going to load up my uh, package, which is the Ghost Sales Query Package. I'm going to write uh, a report uh, using some sales data. You'll notice that my insertable object pane is here on the left. Um, I've got an empty list. By default, I'm in preview mode. So as I add data, I should see data show up as I go. So there's my product line. So there are five product lines in my database. I'll throw in some product types. Uh, let me add some order methods. Uh, let me drop in a couple of measures. Uh, let's see, how about revenue? Um, planned revenue, I'm control clicking as I go here. So I'm going to grab all three at once. It'll actually add them in the order I click them. Revenue, planned revenue, gross profit. Drag them over, add them to my list. They'll show up in that order. You'll see that the screen clears and I have um, my data. Um, not formatted in a, an awesome way because I have all of this repeating data here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and group my list. So I'll select the column I want to group uh, and I will click on the group button. Uh, the group button is this button here. You'll note that as you hover over buttons, they give you hints. Okay. Um, so you know, if you ever wonder what that button is, uh, you can always find out by hovering. Um, and it doesn't just tell you the name of the button, it gives you something of a hint as to what it does. Um, I'm going to go ahead and group by product line, which will deduplicate my product line column. I'll also group by product type. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to add some footers at the bottom of my groups. So you see I've got golf uh, camping equipment followed by golf equipment. I'd like the total for camping equipment here. And then for each product type, cooking gear, lanterns, and so on, I'd like the subtotals. So I'll do that by selecting my measures. I will click on my Summarize button, which is this button here. Um, and I'm going to choose to total. And that will put a total footer at the bottom. And, and I could also add an average um, summary at the bottom if I wanted as well. I can add as many footers as I need to. Okay, but now I have my footers. Um, <clears throat> you see that I have camping equipment with its two footers. I have golf equipment with its two footers. And because I have multiple pages of output, you'll see that I have um, page down and bottom links here at the bottom. I'm going to click the bottom link. And I'll scroll down to the very bottom. And you'll see that I have my footers that I've already seen, plus overall footers that give me the grand total for my three measures, which are uh, the revenue, planned revenue, and gross profit. Now, people will often notice this question mark, and they'll ask me, Rich, what's up with the question mark, and when are they going to fix that? Uh, it turns out that's not a bug. Um, that is uh, there because uh, when I click the bottom link, Cognos did not take the time to build all of the pages that were between the page I was on and the bottom. And because it didn't take that time, it didn't count the pages. And so it can't come up with a number when I click on bottom. Even if there's only two pages, if I'm on page one and I click the bottom link, it doesn't try to count the pages. It just wants to give me the last page of data as fast as it can. So rather than render all the pages in between in a 100-page report, you could see how that might take some time. Um, it jumps me to the bottom. It gives me the data fast, and it doesn't bother counting the pages. That's why there's a question mark there. You'll never see a question mark on the last page if you export this to PDF, right? Because then it's already built every page, you see, so the page numbers will all be there. It's only when you're running in preview mode um, or in HTML mode in the Cognos Viewer that when you click the bottom link that you get this question mark, and that's because it's trying to give you that data um, as quickly as it possibly can. Now, um, other functionality in Cognos Workspace Advanced. For example, perhaps I would like to do a calculation between revenue and planned revenue. Um, simple calculations are actually supported through a button. I can click on revenue, I can control click on planned revenue, and that order is important. When I click on the calculation button, you see it gives me those operands in some simple math. Um, it knows their numbers, so it knows it's math and not um, string manipulation or anything along those lines uh, because my operands are 
uh, numeric, and it guesses that I might want to do simple arithmetic. Uh, the order is important, right, because for subtraction and division, I'll get, um, uh, with subtraction, I'll get a different sign. With division, I'll get a different number. Um, so that's important. Also note that it gives me a couple of percent difference and percent of one. Percent revenue, planned revenue, is revenue divided by planned revenue expressed as a percent. Percent difference is revenue minus planned revenue over planned revenue. So the order really makes a difference here when you're using this button. So that is one way to go ahead and add um, a calculation. Now I added the calculation I didn't want so that I could show you the undo button, um, which is a helpful button as you go. And now let me add the calculation I do want, which is revenue um, minus planned revenue. Now what I'd like to do is change this heading. Now if I go over to the property sheet, which you can see is collapsed to start, so you actually have to go find it if you want to use it. Um, again, um, it, this looks a little intimidating. Um, this is very innocent looking. So if you don't need to use the properties, don't want to use the properties, they're not in your face as you would. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and expand that and I'm going to look over here, since I'm a uh, report studio guy, I'm going to look over here for a way to change that heading. It's not there. Um, that's because we're not trying to have you do every common thing through the property sheet. We're trying to have you do it um, in ways that are less um, IT centric, let's call it. I'm going to right click on this guy and choose edit data item label. And that's how I'll go ahead and edit the label and call it variance. And that's one way to enter a calculation in a report. Now, not particularly sophisticated calculations are supported in that way, right? And if the operands aren't already on my report, it's kind of hard for me to click on them. So there is, in my toolbox, a query calculation tool. And if I go ahead and add that to my report, it will pop up an expression editor. It'll let me name it. I'm going to call this margin percent. And I'm going, I've got three tabs here. And again, people in Report Studio world say, oh yeah, I recognize that. Hmm, it looks a little different and it has a few, uh, um, uh, fewer things. Indeed, this is the middle tool. Um, but it also should be very comfortable for those folks. For the folks who are Query Studio folks, it's not, uh, it's not crowded with functionality. So it, my experience is that people pick this up pretty well. Um, this is all the guys in my report. This is all the guys in my package. And this is a function library that I have access to. Um, if we look at the function library, this is a smaller set of functions than are available in Report Studio. But there are a bunch of functions in here um, that are, let's call them the most commonly used functions that people use in Report Studio. They've made them available in Cognos Workspace Advanced. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use what's in my report already, I'm going to take gross profit and divide it by revenue, which I could have done with the green button, um, but I wanted to show you this functionality. I'll click OK. That will give it to me as a decimal, not as a, um, uh, a percent. So I need to do some formatting. Uh, so how do I format data? There's three ways. If I am comfortable with the property sheet, you'll see that data format is a property. If I'm not comfortable with the property sheet, never fear, there's a button for formatting data. Um, if I'm a right clicker, um, turns out there's a right click, style, data format. So three different ways, two of which have nothing to do with the property sheet. Which way you get here is actually immaterial. Once you get here, it works exactly the same. So I'll go ahead and I'll make this a percent. I'll give it two places of decimals. I won't make any other changes here. And when I click OK, it will redisplay my data as a percent with two decimal places. There is a page layout button. It's this button here. And when you click on it, it gives you a number of page layout options. And the one I want is the two and the one merged on the bottom. So I will go ahead and click on that guy. And you see it will have lay out my page. Now it's made a poor choice of putting my um, list in the, uh, the, the, the top part of that layout. I need to, to show you that at the bottom, 
I have this empty row here that I want my list in. So I'm going to uh, do two things. First of all, I'm going to get rid of the data because it's spanning multiple pages and it's going to make what I want to do hard. So I'm going to do View, Page Design. You see now I've got a layout, but it's not multiple pages. I'm going to select my list. I'm going to drag it to my bottom row. Okay, and now I've got my two cells available here. And I'm going to drag a chart into this left one. And I'll go ahead and do a 3D column chart. And I'll do another chart on the other side. And let's drop that over here. And I will do a line chart with some markers. Okay. So here I am in Cognos Workspace Advanced laying out what essentially is a dashboard. Um, not something I could do in Query Studio before. So when I click on a chart, it will fly out some drop zones, and then I can drop data in from my source. So I'd like to um, plot revenue, and I'm going to plot it by region. And I want a different color per region, so I'm going to drop it in this series. And you see, again, where live data um, is not coming up because I'm in this, this uh, design mode, you see. Um, and so I don't have to wait for it to, to display, uh, to move on. So now I want to do uh, some lines. And I'm going to do some lines by, um, let's do them by uh, branch. And uh, we'll do it by country. Now nah, that's too many lines. Let's do it by um, Let's do a line per order method. And so that's what the series is for. And they're going to show me calculations of quantity totals for each one. And each point on the line on the x-axis, uh, let's call it a year. OK? And now I want to see my data. So I'm going to go back to page preview, which is going to run my data. And it'll give me the two charts on the top, and then it'll build the list on the bottom, and then I'll have page down to see the rest of the list. So there's my charts. Uh, so clearly my web order method is doing the best and is um, selling the most uh, number of items. If I look at my um, regions, you'll see that my America's region has uh, got about $1.5 billion, and um, you've got my list here down below. And then um, I have page down buttons here so I can continue to look at my list data. And when I go back to the top, of course, I have this. Now, it is unusual in the extreme for someone to write a report that um, reports on uh, every row of data in the data warehouse um, or every row of data in the transaction system, right? We virtually always filter data. So I'm going to do some, uh, add some filters here. So I'm going to select this chart and I want to filter this so that it is just showing me um, 2013. So I'll click my filter button and I'll create a custom filter. <clears throat> now what you'll see is that it has decided I am going to filter on revenue. Okay, and why did it decide that? Well, because I didn't select region or revenue or um, if I had a category, the category. If I'd selected region and I clicked and said create a custom filter, it would have come up, you see, for the region. Um, but what if I want to filter on year? Year is not part of this guy. Well, I can do that by selecting the object and then over in the model, right click on year, choose filter for report. That's actually a misnomer. It really is filter for the object I selected. Um, I'm going to do a range. Um, actually, I'll just do a specific value, and I'll just do 2013, which will be good enough. Okay. So now that's filtered to 2013. 
I could do a similar filter over here. I could do a similar filter over here. Now, Report Studio people, free format filters where you can uh, enter complex filter expressions are not part of Cognos Workspace Advanced. In general, you either filter on things that are in your report, like I could filter uh, on just certain order methods, or you filter by doing this right click. So if I wanted to filter that object for a particular date range, and you see how each object is separate, the filters for each object is separate. So let me do this from, uh, let's just do this for January 2012 to December. And no, because then I can adjust on a year. So how about June? And that filter only affects that object. So I've got three independent objects on here laid out in the way I want it. Um, if I want to filter them differently, I can. If I want to filter them the same, I can. If I wanted to label this guy, I could drag a text item in and I could put in some text. So that each uh, each one is labeled for the filters. Um, that I've made. Oops, I ended up putting it in the wrong spot. I should have put it on the left hand side and not the right hand side. Um, probably should have put it in the block um, because of uh, uh, the potential for wrapping um, and uh, that kind of thing. But all the layout stuff that I know how to do in Report Studio all applies here in terms of blocks um, and tables. Um, again, this would be new for people who are used to Query Studio, but the whole point is they're getting more power. So, of course, there is some training when you move up. Now, some folks will say, Rich, you know, 2013 is fine for right now, but what if I wanted to ask my user to supply a value for that filter, um, parameterize that filter? So, if I were to go ahead and edit the filters on this guy, and I see this filter, and it's set to 2013, and I want to make this a prompt as opposed to a fixed 2013, I can not do what I just did. <laughs> um, I can edit the filter and check this checkbox. When you click that checkbox, it assigns a parameter name that is the same name as the year. But read what this checkbox says because it's actually quite critical. Prompt for values when report is run in a viewer. That's different then prompt for values when this report is shown in preview mode. There is no way for Cognos to prompt you when you're running in preview mode. It's not a supported function in preview mode. So when I click OK here, it's going to stay 2013, and it's not going to ask me to pick a year. It's just going to stay 2013. So how do I run this in a viewer so I can test what it would look like for someone not running it in preview mode, that's what this button here is for. So I'll go ahead and run this now in a Cognos viewer. See Cognos viewer right here across the top? It will run, and then it will prompt me to supply a year. Okay? And I can supply that year here. Okay, and now it's run for 2012. Now, I know a lot of you are saying to yourself, okay, that's great. It runs for 2012. How do I tell a person looking at this report that it's running for 2012? Because if I put this out as a PDF, how's anyone going to know that's 2012? Okay. Report Studio people know, oh, well, I would add a layout calculation to my report. Turns out there is no layout calculation tool in the toolbox. So are you stuck? Is it all over? You say, well, then I can't do that. Ah, well, that's where the next feature I want to talk to you about that came out in Cognos 10.2.2 comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and save this guy so that I can come back and edit him in a moment. So I will go ahead and uh, just save him right here. Um, call him webinar report. And let me get out of CWA. And I'll go back. I'm going to show you a couple of slides 
and then I'm going to, um, uh, I'll do what the slides say. And the slides I'm showing you are custom interface profiles. That's the topic. So with Cognos 10.2.2, um, there were a couple of enhancements in the Cognos Workspace Advanced tool, and um, uh, the, they really revolve around things like using visualizations um, and having uh, uh, better visualizations and having to fill in fewer parts of the visualization for them to render. Um, and this interface uh, profile change, um, and this, this interface profile change is the one I want to spend some time on because I think it could be very important um, for a lot of people uh, if you choose to implement it. So the notion here is that Cognos Workspace Advanced and Report Studio, as it turns out, sort of come out of the box with a certain set of functions. Report Studio has pretty much all of them. CWA has fewer. Um, the, but once in a while, I would like to be able to add a little bit to CWA um, to make it even more functional. Or maybe I have a group of users for whom I'd like to uh, give Report Studio, but not everything. Take away the Condition Explorer, take away uh, the ability to write SQL, um, or maybe take away the ability to do joins. Um, in other words, simplify the functionality in Report Studio. Maybe add functionality to CWA, or perhaps even simplify CWA in terms of taking away functionality. That's what this functionality here, this custom user interfaces and profiles, is for. It's optional. Uh, when you install 10.2.2, if you leave it alone, it'll work just the way I've been showing you. Um, and you don't have to implement this capability. But if you do implement this capability, it's implemented. There's no undo. Um, once you say, I'm going to go this way, you have gone this way. Um, and it, it, it's a, it's a one-button click. It does uh, uh, have an are you sure, and then uh, you're done. And it gives you the ability to uh, create a custom user interface for your CWA and Report Studio users. So it gives you a very fine control. Now, normally, after you've created one of these profiles, you would assign it to a group of users, and it would be the only profile that they would have access to, so they would just launch as their profile. But for some people, you maybe give them two profiles, or for administrators, you'll always have all the profiles available to you. And when you have multiple profiles, you'll be prompted for which profile you're going to use when you launch Cognos Workspace Advanced. I'll show you that in a moment, but that's the, what I'm talking about in terms of the prompt. So how do you do this? How do you turn it on? And how do you um, make these profiles? Well, number one, launch your administration screen. Go to user interface profiles on the security tab. That's where it's always been. There's always been two there, but there's never been this button. This button is called import UI profiles. When you click it, that's the unreversible thing. When you click it, it actually removes user interface profiles from security and drops them into the library tab and gives you two of them, one called Report Studio Professional and one called Cognos Workspace Advanced. These guys you cannot edit. They are read-only uh, and they're exactly the interfaces we're used to. But on both of them, there's a little button that you can click on that will drop down and give you a copy option on. When you copy and give a, a name to your new profile, it gives you as a starting point the settings for the one you pick. And then through this interface, you can um, change the, uh, uh, the settings. You can change um, and turn on and off features from the default profile uh, and, and for use in your new, uh, or to take away from use in your new profile. So let me do this and turn on something. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in as an administrator. And I'm going to do that in Firefox so that I can start up a separate session. So give me a moment. And I'll go in as uh, uh, the administrator tools. And what I'm going to do when I get there is go to security, go to user interface profiles, and I'm going to go ahead and click that irreversible button. Now, it does tell you it's a non-reversible action. Um, I intend to go through with it, so I'll click OK. When the uh, 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 
this comes up, it tells you that it has moved the user interface tab to the library tab. It gives you two names of uh, the profiles and it takes you right there. So here I am in the library. There's my user interface profile. So there's the two profiles. See, they're gone from security now. They only live under library. So I'm going to take this Cognos Workspace Advanced one and I'm going to choose to copy it. It'll ask me, well, what name would you like? And I'm going to say plus layout because I'm going to add to the standard CWA profile the ability to do a layout calculation. So I'll click OK here. It'll save it and then I can go ahead and edit it. And up will come this editor. And in the editor, I can find uh, the toolbox and add to the toolbox the layout calculation. There's a lot of toolboxes, more toolboxes than I was aware existed. But it turns out that the page view toolbox is the one I need to add it to. Um, I have looked for documentation on what everything here means, what all these sections are, and what all these options are in between. Um, I have yet to find documentation. It is my hope and expectation that IBM will eventually publish documentation that will help guide us with these edits. But what I found is I go in, I turn on stuff, I save it, I go use it. Is it what I expected? Yes or no? Um, if, if not, then okay. I go back and I tweak some more things. Um, and that works and it doesn't take very long for me to get the interface that I want. In this case, I know this one, I've got exactly what I want for my little demo. I'll go ahead and click OK to save it. And now I'll go back to this session here. I'll refresh. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, launch Cognos Workspace Advanced to edit that report. So that report ended up in samples, models, should have ended up in ghost sales query. And I'll go ahead and click on the edit me button. Now I have access to all three profiles. I have access to the Report Studio profile, the Cognos Workspace Advanced profile, and the Cognos Workspace Advanced profile with the uh, additional feature I just added. So you see, because I have access to more than one profile, I got this prompt. Um, if I only had access to one profile, I wouldn't see this prompt. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick the profile with the layout calculation on. Set as default profile um, sets this as the default profile in a cookie on this PC. Um, and until I um, delete those cookies, I will not be able to change my profile again. So if you do have someone set the default profile and then they say, I wish I hadn't and I'd like to get prompted again, um, you need to have them clear their cookies. Um, and then when they launch, uh, they'll get prompted again. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK there. It'll launch. There'll be no other changes except now I'm going to have that layout calculation tool in my toolbox. <laughs> Interestingly, it forgot that I moved things. Um, that's a surprise, I have to say. Hadn't seen that behavior before, um, but we'll go with it. So layout calculation. So now I could add a layout calculation on this side, and it'll bring up my, lay my report expression editor just like it would in Report Studio. And um, I have a parameter called year um, in my parameters tab. Uh, so I could do something along these lines. Um, let's go something like that. And then my parameter and drop that in and click OK. Oh, apparently oh, it doesn't like the that for my concatenator, so I'll bet you it's that. It is. Um, it's going to prompt me for a year. That's normal behavior for Cognos. Um, when you add a layout calculation that's using a parameter value. And you'll note that it's not here at all. Um, and when it, when it redisplays, right, there it is, charted for 2012. So somehow or another, it didn't end up where I put it. Um, I must not have put it in the right spot. 
Let me put it there. Now, is this charted for 2012, this guy? Let's look at our filter and find out. No, he's actually charted for 2013. Why is that? Well, this parameter is only valid when I run not in preview mode, but when I run in viewer mode. So when I run as a viewer, right, and I put in 2011, Okay. And again, I should have paid more attention to layout. I'm going fast so I can show you the functionality, but obviously this should have been in a, a, a block or in a table cell. But you note that it's now correct. Um, when you add things to the CWA profile, some of the things you'll add, like layout calculations, are not supported in preview mode. Now, you can, through that same interface that um, lets you say add layout calculations, change the default to be design mode, and actually change the default to be for this pane to show up on the left as part of that profile. Um, and if you're going to add features to the CWA tool that are not supported in preview mode, that may be a good thing to do um, so that I'm not seeing uh, incorrect information like I am here. So this is both a, this is new functionality and a little bit of a, of a beware. Uh, be aware that the preview mode does not support everything you could turn on in the profile. Um, but if I go to page design, you see I don't have that problem. I also don't have any data. Um, for me to see data here and not go into the page preview mode, right, I would need to run in a viewer, but then I know it's always correct. Okay, so this custom user interface notion lets me create interfaces um, that can ease people into functionality, perhaps, um, can, give, uh, uh, can take away functionality that you find especially troublesome. Um, uh, it could allow you to move people from profile to profile as they take internal training. So until you've taken training on conditional formatting, perhaps in Report Studio, you won't have uh, access to the conditional um, uh, explorer. Um, because I can also take the Report Studio and make a copy of it and edit it, and generally speaking here, I would take things away. So if I wanted to take away an Explorer, I could take away the Condition Explorer from this. Now, the way I get to these interfaces, even though that's a Report Studio change, I don't launch Report Studio. As you'll see, when I launch Report Studio, I don't get prompted for a profile. I just go into full-on Report Studio. When I am launching CWA, however, and I go ahead and I click a Report Studio type profile, it actually doesn't launch me in CWA. It actually launches me into Report Studio. And when we get in, it should show me um, that I do not have access to the Condition Explorer. All right. Um, well, I see that I'm nearly out of time. Um, I think I have time for a couple of questions. But again, um, for those of you whose questions I don't get to, uh, never fear, I will absolutely um, respond to your questions after the fact. Notice there is no condition explorer, just query and page. Um, but let me take a look at the chat box here and see. Okay. All right, the first question is this. Can you create active reports through Cognos Workspace Advanced? No. That is strictly a Report Studio only function right now. Um, so the Report Studio profile includes the ability to create active reports. Even if you, as it turns out, create a custom profile for CWA and drop in, checkbox, and turn on the active report functions, it will not display in the CWA user interface. Um, so I guess that gets to another thing, which is I can turn on things in the CWA profile that simply won't show up um, because it needs to be the Report Studio profile to support that. 
Um, maps, um, active reports are both report studio only functions. So good question there. Um, in Report Studio, I can copy my report definition to the clipboard as an XML so I can put it in source code control. Does this work in Cognos Workspace Advanced? Yes, it does. Um, the same way. Under Tools, oh, this is Report Studio. Um, in the CWA interface, there is a Tools menu, and it uh, includes a copy report to clipboard and copy report from clipboard functionality, just like Report Studio. In fact, my friends, between you and me, CWA is Report Studio. All we're talking about are user interfaces, the Report Studio user interface, the full function interface, and the CWA interface, the, um, the, the, the less function uh, rich user interface, if you'll allow me, um, are, are both interfaces on one back end engine. So let's call that back end engine Report Studio. The CWA interface exposes a certain set of functionality. The Report Studio interface exposes a whole lot more functionality. Uh, so ultimately, the XML document that is um, being edited by both of these user interfaces is exactly the same document. I can edit a, a report in CWA, turn around and edit in Report Studio, turn back around and continue to edit it in CWA because both interfaces edit the same XML spec. And under Tools in CWA, you can copy your report to your clipboard. So if you then save it as a file and check it into source code control, you can certainly do that with your CWA reports, just like you can with your Report Studio professional interface reports. And I think we're out of time. Um, I'm so sorry for all of you who have other questions that didn't get answered, but I do promise to get back to you. Thank you very, very much for joining us for this webinar on Cognos Workspace Advanced. My name is Rich Chester. I'm the Director of Consulting at LPA. Do feel free to reach out to me at rchester at lpa.com. And uh, thanks again for attending today's webinar. Bye-bye.